Straight at the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. And Trace, I need you out here for just a second. I uh, had a little technical difficulty, just a little <laughs> technical difficulty. Paul Cocker, I'm so glad you're back, and uh, I love you dearly. And we have spent many, many years together, and we have seen some things happen crazy, 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 crazy. Yes, we but have. We are coming upon an election, and we're going to talk for about 10 minutes about the general things that are happening in the economy. And I understand, as a realtor, that the uh, darned interest rate went up again, didn't it? Yes, it did. And we are seeing, we're seeing almost the normal of what my house was done at 6.75%. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. But it didn't stop me from buying my house mm -hmm. when I bought it. What stopped me was the disastrous mess we went into after that. Yes. That um, caused me to lose about $300,000 on my home. Mm -hmm. So we're advising people to shop, but shop wisely. We're mm -hmm. advising people to think clearly, mm -hmm. but do not run in fear and do not stop living. And um, it's crazy. It's just crazy. We have, we don't want the world to be in fear, but we do want them to be cautious. And you're a very cautious person. Well, th there are times that I'm cautious. Yes. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, when I see an opportunity, I move aggressively for it, towards mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But the biggest problem that we've been in is, is, you know, I was talking with somebody the other day, I, I equate it in similarity to what California did with their forests for the mm -hmm. longest time. They refused to do the controlled burns, they refused to, to manage the forest and let's let it get back to natural and the way it's supposed to be and then now all of a sudden thousands and tens of thousands of people have lost their yes. homes yes everything because there was all this tender that was there so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the problem is is, is our government um, kind of like a parent who ch wants to be liked by their child mm -hmm. and keeps mm -hmm. them happy in the short run but ruins them in the long term mm -hmm. um, has has kept putting off and putting off and bailing out keeping us from having recessions now we have inflation with all the money that's been printed and they've got to deal with it somehow mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because what most people don't realize is inflation is actually a lot more devastating than deflation to the average person especially if you're retired and on a fixed income mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's this is a an interesting environment it's tough i went to walmart yesterday because i needed a smoke detector and i just might throw into that i'm i had the weirdest thing get, to get to a closing of 35 years in real estate, I've never been up against anything like this one. And I, I stood there in the aisle laughing that, are you kidding me? But as I checked out at Walmart, I noticed people I've known for over 40 years are now cashiers at Walmart. Do you know what that tells me? You don't have enough to live to the end of our lives. Right. Because these people are older than me. Right. And they're cashiers at Walmart. That tells me that we are living longer, right? And the cost of living is more expensive. So you have to pray <laughs> that you live out the money, or that you die suddenly and your kids get something. But it is a very different environment because when you look in the cashiers at Walmart, there weren't any young up-and-coming kids there. There were a bunch of old grannies. Right. And it's because they're not there because they're bored. They're there because they need to supplement their incomes. They're there because they need to supplement. And you know, in in the past 22 years have been just absolutely horrific for most retirees. I mean, you got to think back in the year 2000, if somebody retired, you could get a CD paying seven percent. I well, had some at 13 and three quarters. 13 and three quarters, mm -hmm. y'all, at Pickens County Bank. Thank you, Dennis Burnett. Yes. <laughs> So, it was crazy. You know, you retired then, and if you were if you were an investor, especially if you didn't have a risk managed portfolio, the S and P five hundred went sideways for fourteen years from two thousand to two thousand fourteen with two fifty percent declines. 
So if you're drawing income off of your investments, you're wiped out by year 10 mm -hmm. or 11. Then you mm -hmm. had a housing crisis that was mm -hmm. wiped out. All of that was preventable, but you had a federal government who wanted to have their cake and eat it too. So they're like, oh, let's bail out the economy, let's bail out the economy, let's, let's, let's bail our buddies out mm -hmm. instead of having allowing these recessions to take their course and having a strong foundation of an underlying economy. And that's where we are now. I mean, everything is so distorted to the point that that we really don't, we're in uncharted territory. You yeah. know, can they yeah. can they kick this can down the road another year or two by not raising interest rates, or was all the money printed during the pandemic created this inflationary fire along with the shutdowns that's going to linger for a while? Mm -hmm. I, I do think that inflation is going to be operating like birth pains. You know, I've been talking for years that inflation was coming, and mm -hmm. it's here. It's here. Um, Go to the grocery store. To be it's fair, here. to yeah. be fair, I thought the market was going to go down before, but the government just kept printing. And in, in my perspective, I, I just couldn't believe it. I'm like, are you going to run the risk of major inflation that's going to wipe out a lot of people mm -hmm. just to keep the stock market up? So when um, you and I started 16 years ago, the mm -hmm. The stock market was at sixty seven hundred. Yes. Sixty seven hundred. Paul, it is at thirty three thousand, is that correct? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I know where the S and P is, but not the Dow anymore. Yeah, so yeah, yeah approximately yeah. thirty. 000. I think it is about thirty seven. Thirty three thousand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. S and P's first around four thousand. Yeah. I know yeah. what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it is uh it is one of those things that we are um we've lived through it and you have guided gently your clients through some craziness. Yeah, and by, and by God's grace, I mean, in spite of me, he's helped us keep our clients in the right place the majority of the time. Now, we really struggled for a period of time from like 2015 to 2017, 18. Mm -hmm. It was just the worst environment for our strategy. Uh, we were conservative when we needed to be aggressive. Um, and I'm glad that. But we're if you've been aggressive, somebody would have angered at you if something had gone wrong. Well, yeah, I mean that's the so, problem. I mean, you know, if if things had have blown up, if the government hadn't have really, really bailed out, it's like kind of like you're watching two people and they're you're like, I know how they can deal with this, but are they seriously going to do it? And then mm -hmm. they go, Oh, they did it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we made some adaptations, and and you know, by God's grace, since then things have worked out really well. This year, our strategies have done incredibly well. And, um, you know, we've been very cautious with a lot of the portfolios this year, starting really early in the year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the one thing that's surprising to me this year has been uh, precious metal prices are down a substantial amount. I don't get that. Well, there's the belief on Wall Street that, that the Fed's going to kill inflation and the dollar strengthening and people are kind of frozen with their capital. So I understand why it's taking place now. But it does surprise so me. So silver, gold, silver, gold, platinum. gold miners, platinum, palladium, okay. all of those have struggled. Now mm -hmm. I really like uranium right now because mm -hmm. I think our government leaders around the world have made a made a uh, an, a foolish decision when it comes to nuclear. So I think there's opportunity in uranium. I'm not giving a recommendation. Mm -mm. You, you got to go. That. You yeah. got, and I didn't give a symbol. I just talked yeah. about an asset yeah. class. But. Yeah. Um, but I, I think inflation is going to be a birth pain that's going to subside for a period of time, but it's it's going to come back. I mean, we read a report today that another province in China is being shut down over their one COVID, uh, zero COVID policy. Really? Yeah, so that's going to be an economic damage. And, and China is our manufacturing powerhouse, right? One of the supply chain issues that we have is because a lot of things are produced in China and mm -hmm. they're shut down. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're running a just-in-time global inventory, you know, you can't just shut down with people still having money to spend. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be here for a while. And uh, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen when the dollar uh, starts to lose its strength. And um, so we'll see. It's interesting. I did read a report that a $500,000 house had whatever that payment was. Let's, let's say, you know, when interest about rates were around 2.5 percent. a month. Was it twenty seven hundred thousand? For five, yeah, when, but that was when rates were two point seven percent, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're not even. So today, <laughs> today to have the exact same payment with interest rates higher, it's about three eighty five on that same house, isn't yeah. it? 
So mm -hmm. have you seen prices move down any at all? Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I have seen, um, and I think it's a good, I think it's a strong adjustment that needed to be made because when you put a house on the market today, there's a reality check going on that should have gone on all the time. Mm -hmm. People were panic buying, and I love that we were selling at 30000 over listing price. Of course, we all work on commission, and we all want to see our seller do very well. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I sit across the table from people who I'm going, oh my gosh, this has to be painful for you. I don't say that, but I think in my heart, it has to be painful for you because you've overpaid for a house that if the economy were to do what it has done in the last two months, adjust itself to the normal. It is normal now. Things are normal now. Mm -hmm. and, and Evelyn and I talk about it all the time. They're not aggressive as they were. We were having 20 people put in offers and they would continue to go up on the offer and we're like, if you'll wait two weeks, there'll be another house on the market. But we didn't say that because right. that's not our job. Well, your job is to represent the seller. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're to representing the, the buyer. To get the biggest dollar we yeah. can get. Yeah. 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 And, and it's hard and it's painful because we know I overpaid for a house that has a problem. And you talk about getting bit in the rear. I've been bit in the rear and I'm struggling. That's I haven't been able to breathe. I've got a lot of issues going on. I've been trying to work on it. Can't stay in there long. A lot of people were, were giving up an inspection. They were giving up an appraisal. Mm -hmm. We were doing stupid things because that was the timing. Well, the timing is important, Paul. It, the timing is the timing ridiculously is important. important. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know that's one of the conversations. It's interesting because with Kel and living in Milledgeville, he's wanting to buy a home. And you know, I I've been telling him for the past year and a half, just save your money and wait. Save mm -hmm. your money and mm -hmm. wait. Well, I'm throwing it away on rent. Yeah, technically you can do that, but if price is correct, like I think they they're will, correcting. even if it's twenty percent. Yeah, they're correcting. You, let's say it's a three hundred thousand dollar house and it drops to two twenty mm -hmm. or two forty. Mm -hmm. Well, that's sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. If your rent's twelve hundred dollars a month for two years, oh, yeah. you're yeah, you're losing some money, but the flexibility is tremendous. And one yep. thing that I, that I think we forget in society, and this is what I keep explaining to my children, and I'll explain to this to you guys as well. I don't get to tell this to clients that I work with a lot just because I mean, the majority of people I work with are retired or right mm -hmm. at retirement, so they're at a different phase in life. But when I counsel younger individuals and I do, you know, do some of the, the kind of side work that I do, you know, volunteering time, debt is, is future money spent today. Mm -hmm. So what, mm -hmm. I, what I explained to Kells, I said, look, you're young. I said, you get one shot. So he was looking at a piece of property. I said, okay, do you like this property enough to where if prices drop 20% that you're going to be stuck here for seven years because you're mm -hmm. going to be hamstrung. I to tell everybody else. that. And when that time comes and that time will come, mm -hmm. you know, that time mm -hmm. will come, mm -hmm. then you jump and you move on it. But, but that's usually not when everybody else is in a frenzy. That, and, and the hardest path for us as humans to walk is the path less traveled. I mean, and emotion is such a play. I yes. mean, I see it, and I'm like, as a realtor, I'm like, common sense has to stand strong oh, yeah. on every decision we make in the real estate market. And common sense, I, I've dealt with this a lot lately because people are like, I really want this, I really want this. And I said, okay, if in two years things go sour, do you really want to stay here when it's sour? And she said, well, what does that mean? Then I explained to them that right. if things turn upside down, then you can't get what you're paying because you're overpaying. Do you mm. really want to be here when you have an opportunity to move closer to your grandchildren or closer to your children and you're stuck here because the market's going to change? And then they go, oh, and I'm like, oh, oh a yeah. little common sense works. Yeah. Well, good for you. Well, we have to do something early on today because we have a very, very special friend. His name is Vic Davis, and he is facing surgery on September the 6th, which is a very strange, I have two closings on September the 6th. My husband passed away on September the 6th. September the 6th, we're gonna declare it a very positive day. September the 6th is gonna be a positive day for our dear friend, Vic Davis, and we're gonna do a commercial break, and then we're gonna show you I have been honored to get to film Vic Davis, 88 years old, in the studio as Dwight Sanford is producing a CD for this gentleman. It's something he wanted to give to his family. Because this surgery has come up, Mr. Sanford has been shoved, shoved, shoved to finish the project long before Christmas when the deadline was to be. 
So he's in the studio, he does all the instruments, he does the backup vocals, he does everything except Vic Davis's voice. And so it is such a precious time to see these two good friends enjoying the moment. We didn't know that the moment could change because Vic is going in for surgery. He'll be out of work a little bit as 57 Heavens foreman. But we hope he will be back at work and back healthy and happy and everything going well. But it's been a mission now to finish this project very quickly. So the project I was filming yesterday and I'm watching and I'm watching the, adding the music and doing it and I'm like, what an honor, what an honor to see these two gentlemen work together. So we're gonna share a little bit of this with y'all in honor of our friend. And then I, I wanna tell y'all something. On Tuesday when we did the show, Dwight made a comment that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. Not at all. And yesterday, you talk about up close and personal, 52 West, coming toward town, guy pulls in front of you, you almost have a head-on collision. It would have certainly been a fatality, and God stepped in there. And there was a way, the brakes were slammed down, went around, black marks everywhere, but it was God. It was, and it was, it was so weird, because I'm like, if you think God keeps showing up, you're going to read a little bit of that book at the end of the show today. God keeps showing up. God is going to be in the operating room with Vic Davis as he is going in there. Vic is going to be fine. He's 88 years old. He still has so much to do. He still drives every day. It tickled me to death. He pulls up yesterday in his really cool 69 Chevrolet truck, and I'm going, yes! <laughs> Just, he has so much life to live and so much love to give. And yesterday when this thing happened on 52 West, it's like, oh my gosh, that could have ended everything. That could have ended the project. That could have ended everything. Yep. It's so weird how life just, God keeps showing up. And so to Mike Smith, who gave me this book, I just love, he and Diane are just precious. And uh, I can't wait to bring him back on the show, but Paula is gonna read a page. And the page I think is, I chose today is about healing. And we heal in many, many different ways. So we're gonna talk about that. But right now, we're going to take a commercial break, and we're going to go to our friend Vic Davis, just a little 39-second clip of him, and then a little bit of he and his brother Bobby talking about life. And, um, and then we're going to come back, and Paul and I are going to visit with you for the rest of the day. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The American Made Music Festival returns to Hiawassee, Georgia, September 15th through 17th. This three-day festival features the best of country, bluegrass, and gospel music, including special guests Craig Morgan, Lone Star, Ricky Skaggs, and Kentucky Thunder, Daly and Vincent. Stars and stripes forever, America. Three-day and single-day tickets available, along with on-site camping by the lake. The American Made Music Festivals with Daly and Vincent, presented by Gus Arendale and Springer Mountain Farms. United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. 
We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Okay, we're going to do the very end. All you'll say is, we could, you and I. But hold that you and I just a minute, just a second. Here we go. We could, we could, you and I. Perfect. The baritone singer has got it nailed Good down. Goodness gracious. Vic, where'd you learn that? Hey, well, uh, you mean I'm going to get a raise, maybe? <laughs> no, no, this, no, this no, don't no raise. Pay no, no more. raise. Well, uh, I'll just quit singing good. <laughs> you know, when, when the other two brothers were living, uh, God bless their souls, we'd sing quartet. Wow. And uh, but Vic would always sing the baritone because he could do it. Yeah, but and uh, we, somebody you got said, it, you got it. Yeah. Well, then let me tell something. I know a little something about this harmony business, and I've been hearing old Vic over here, he'll cut into them sevenths right yeah. before you go to the other chord. Yeah. That's know-how, folks. That's nothing yeah. but know-how. Well, Vic's bragging on me. Vic's, uh, right, yeah. somebody yeah. told Vic, uh, <clears throat> said uh, one day we had them get together and we sung a song to him. They told Vic, one of the cousins said, you, you have got a real Bella, baritone voice. It's the truth. And Vic, he got to thinking about that. And when he got home, he got to studying about it. Studying. Studying. And Vic studied a lot. When he got home, he got the dictionary now and looked up Mella. It said almost rotten. <laughs> and you thought yeah, almost right. rotten baritone voice. <laughs> That's the kind of family that Jerry and I were raised in. Yeah. And, uh, Just had to do the best you could. Yeah, had to do the best you <laughs> could. Yeah. So when somebody would brag on Vic's baritone, you know us brothers would say, yeah, you can't bear the tone. Yeah. You yeah. Can't bear the tone. Was you just trying to get by, man? Yeah, just trying. Just trying to get by. Yeah. See if they let me eat the yeah. meal. Yeah. Do the best you all could. All jokes yeah. aside, he has got a good baritone voice. Boy, he does. What a pleasure. What an honor. Yeah. It's great. Great being here, well, Sherry. Thank you for inviting us. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some fun, and we're going to get some stuff done. Yes, yeah, we're Yay. Back. Okay, we're back. Okay, Paul Kiker. <coughs> yes, I did Bless start you. that coughing mess. You're going to get to do the rest of the show, and it'll be the Paul <laughs> Kiker show until 
945, and then at 945, we're going to share a song that I just love with you. <laughs> so, all right. That's going to be hard for me to come up with all kinds of stuff to talk about. Nah, you can do it. Tell me where we're going. Where are we going? That's a really, really good question. On, in our investment committee, we've probably had the greatest disagreements that we've had in several years on where things are going. Um, I am of the belief, and I may be wrong in the short run, but I do believe that I'll be right over the next 12 to 24 months. But mm -hmm. in asset management, being too early is the same as being wrong. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the fine line, that's the stressful part of my profession right now is just trying to make sure that we protect clients from the downturn, but at the same time are flexible enough to take advantage of opportunity. So we got the midterm elections coming up. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, we need some change in this country, that's for sure. Boy, don't we. The best that's going to happen is lock down. You know, if the Republicans sweep the House and the Senate, that's going to basically give us a deadlock with the president. They're not going to get anything through because he'll have the, uh, I would assume, have the ability to veto. But one thing that this, this administration, from what I read this morning, is really focused on is introducing a central bank digital currency. That's what they see as kind of their legacy that they want to leave by the time he's done in 2024. So they're working on the infrastructure of that right now. Now, I don't know how that's going to be rolled out. There are several theories about that. If, if <coughs> the recession is much worse than what I would anticipate that it's going to be, then, then it's possible that they print money like they did and give it to people in 2020. But at this point, you got to go sign up at the Federal Reserve and you have a central bank digital currency. It's all about the removal of privacy and freedoms, and I completely disagree with that. Completely disagree with that. So they're, they're Don't get my guns. Don't get my money. <clears throat> don't get my stuff. Right. Leave me alone. I, I don't have anything to hide. No. But, but it's yours. But my privacy is my privacy, right? So we have a God-given right to privacy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I, th I think that's something that's going to be major coming. One of the things that I'm the most concerned about over the long term, and I don't think many people are paying attention to this, <coughs> is when the war between Russia and Ukraine started, okay, let's just forget about who's, let's not even go into who's right, who's wrong, anything that goes there. But one thing that this administration did was weaponize the U.S. dollar and the SWIFT banking system. So the U.S. has been the global reserve currency since World War II solidified. When Nixon removed us from the gold standard with Bretton Woods in 1971, I think it was, we had an agreement with Saudi Arabia that oil would be sold in U.S. dollars, which further solidified our position. And that's a great advantage mm -hmm. that we have. Mm -hmm. America, you just don't understand the advantage that that's given us. Well, my, my great concern is, is the moment that we weaponize that <clears throat> system and a country that's supposed to, to support due process, okay? So we're seizing assets of Russian oligarchs and, you know, they're bad people, right? Let's say they're, they're horrible people, but there's still a due process that we're supposed to stand for, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, those of us that would be married would not support somebody going into adultery, uh, no matter the circumstances, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So when we weaponized that SWIFT banking system, we got away from the due process. What are our, what are China and Russia and India and our global trading partners going to do? Can you trust the U.S. anymore? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't believe that we're trustworthy mm -hmm. because I know if I was them, I would never allow myself to be in that position mm -hmm. because we have power over them now. So what we've seen happen since the Russia-Ukraine war break out is we've seen a continuation of agreements and open discussion for Brazil, Russia, China, India, and South Africa to operate under their own monetary system. Wow. Okay. That would be destructive. Be unbelievably destructive. That would be destructive. Now, <clears throat> Russia is already, you know, selling their natural resources in rubles, and that's caused the Russian ruble to strengthen dramatically. Uh, in comparison to other other currencies. Now, that's a huge competitive disadvantage to us. And what they're discussing is they're saying, look, we don't want China to have all of it. We don't want Russia to have all of it because we don't believe one country is that, you know, is is trustworthy enough in the long term, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like 
money rarely lasts longer than three generations because you have the person who built it with character integrity. They made it easier for their child who doesn't have the same character integrity and then usually it gets to the third generation, they're a bunch of spoiled brats and they blow it all. Not always the case, but that's usually the way the cycle goes. We can see that throughout the biblical story. You read the Bible front to back, you see that cycle take mm -hmm. place. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things we talked about last time. <clears throat> good men create good times. Good times create weak men. Mm -hmm. Weak men create hard times mm -hmm. and hard times create good men. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that's just a cycle like our seasons that we go through. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, my big concern is that at some point I have no way of knowing the timing on which this is going to take place, but in the next three to five years that could be dramatically different. But what these countries are talking about, because I could sidetrack live TV, right, um, is they want to have a basket of these currencies where the U.S. is not in control. Oh, no. So how quickly will that take place? I have no clue. If it happens really quickly, then we have unbelievably severe inflation in the U.S., but what that'll do is be an equalization of the nations and the currencies. So the dollar's strong. We have things produced in China because it's cheaper to be done there and mm -hmm. sent back. Now, the good thing is that transition is going to bring manufacturing back into the United States. Which would be awesome. Which would be fantastic. It would be awesome if there was a workforce waiting to work. If there the was a workforce. The Dairy Queen can't even hire somebody to dip an ice cream for $13 an hour. Come on. It drives me crazy. Well, I mean, Does that not drive you nuts? I mean, come on. You've got this. What was your first job? How much did you get paid? Uh, I think I made $4.25 <laughs> an hour. $1.35 an hour. Yeah, $4.25. $1.35 an hour. They're making thirteen dollars an hour to dip an ice cream, and you can't hire people to do it. I know. Will and I were talking because he plays football on Friday night, and he, I let him sleep till about ten o'clock. And when he gets up, he's so sore and bruised and beat up, and <laughs> and, and and I just keep and you're thinking, loving it. No, and I keep looking at him. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm letting you sleep because I had to be at the lumber spot seven thirty on Saturday morning. Yeah and working and that's just what everybody did back then but man it was brutal especially having yeah. to carry sheetrock or or, yeah. or anything and it was good for me i'm not yeah. saying it was yeah. bad yeah. but that's where you run <laughs> that's where you run kids because mm -hmm. you let them sleep till 10 o'clock but anyway mm -hmm. so um yeah i mean it's it the, the manufacturing coming back we don't have people working because they're forgiven student debt to a mm -hmm. certain amount mm -hmm. come Ridiculous. on how is that fair okay it's not Anyway, if you're a cancer they, patient, you have four hundred and forty-two thousand dollars worth of unpaid bills from your cancer treatment that wasn't picked up by anybody, including your insurance. That you paid for. Why don't for we that's forgive those people? It. Why right. are we forgiving student loans? Student loan is a choice. You chose to take out a student loan. You chose not to go to a college that would provide you with an education that wasn't going to cost out the yang yang. So I'm sorry. Look, here's the thing. Happening. Here's the thing. I, I'm a political atheist, and, and a lot of people have a hard time with this because you may be in the camp of Democrat all the way, or you may be in the camp of Republican all the way. If you are. Or just a conservative who looks at both sides. Just a conservative. Yeah, just know? be in the middle of the road. I, I, I don't want to even call conservative anymore or liberal because it's more those of us that want to be wise. Because mm -hmm. you can be wise mm -hmm. and slightly liberal, and you can be. I mean, <coughs> we, we've distorted all the definitions. But here's the point we're releasing from the Special Petroleum Reserve all the way up until the end of October. Oh my gosh, the election's in November. We're, we're given, um, you know, forget, wanting to forgive student loans here right before the midterm yeah, election. Imagine that. Guys, this is no different than trying to buy votes. There's <laughs> no integrity in it. This is not what's supposed to be done. You used to do it in Gilmer County with a pint of moonshine. Yeah. And I would rather see y'all out on the roads delivering a pint of moonshine to every house that wants to vote for you than to see you falling for the crap they're trying to throw down our throats now. Because oh, they yeah. are trying to throw some crap yeah. down our throats. They are. Well, and I, I've got to go look at the legislation, but I was told that there was a, uh, a bill passed by the House that states that you can't have any discussion in a classroom outside of what um, outside of what the textbook says on certain topics. I think I saw that. Yeah. And, and if that's the case, then we have allowed our government to dictate exactly what our children are going to be taught. Yeah. Because most parents, most parents, unfortunately, don't have any conversation with their kids at home about what they're being taught at school. 
and and even those That's of us funny. who try. <laughs> That's funny. I have to think of election day, the moment my children were allowed to vote. Get up. We're going to vote Republican. <laughs> they said, we are? Are we Republicans? Yes, you are. <laughs> You're sleeping in my bed. You're living in my house. Yes, we are. That's and Papa or Papa uh, Martin would just, he would call us at 7 a.m. The polls are open. Go vote. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Teach your kids right. <laughs> so the thing that I'll tell you guys is, as this equalization takes place and that manufacturing comes back in the United States, the costs are going to go <coughs> up dramatically. Okay, labor call, labor's prices are going to have to go up because the government's just printing so much money that there's a point at which they're better to go to work. Than they, and the government knows what they're doing. I mean, they, they do. So this is, not, this is not accidental and this is not just completely foolish. I, I do think the majority of the decisions are foolish and ungodly, but they're not foolish in what they're doing. These are smart people that aren't being completely honest about what's taking place. But here's the thing that I want everybody to understand. There's going to be unbelievable opportunity for those who are prepared for it, for those who are patient enough to, to understand there's not going to be any magical answer. Will gold be the answer? Maybe, maybe not. Will cryptocurrencies be the answer? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know who's going to survive. Will real estate be the answer? Maybe, maybe not. You're going to have to diversify and you're going to have to have a, 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 a a part of your assets set aside for opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be <clears throat> patient. And from my standpoint, I believe you have to seek the Lord in prayer for wisdom. I, I Look, I, I, I don't believe the Lord's going to tell you exactly what to do when it comes to money like that, because then we believe it's all up to us. But he will grant us wisdom if we ask for it. The Bible's clear about that. And wisdom's not going to be instantaneous, because if money comes too quickly to people, and 23 years of doing this now, oh my gosh, 24 years. Isn't that years. weird? <coughs> You've been doing this that long? Yeah, I used to have hair that I came know, down to here. Hair. It was all black. Got old shows. He had hair. I didn't have to wear glasses <laughs> at one of the point. And you didn't have a gray beard. So, and I didn't have hair growing on my back. I don't understand what it is. It <coughs> falls off of here and goes beard down there. <laughs> Uh, this is too much. The best part was oh, when I realized I had hair on my back. Lordy, I think Holly Lordy. gagged three times while she was shaving it. But, but the, the point being is you just got to be patient. There's going to be massive opportunity. The government has, has so supported the corporations that they funneled all of the business and revenue into, into a certain group of corporations and it's crowded out. So when these, this recession occurs, whenever the bill is due for our foolishness, it's going to destroy a lot of those companies that don't have any business being in the position they're in. It's also going to destroy the finances of a lot of people who are foolishly refusing to see the truth. For those that are adaptive, it's going to be challenging. Nobody's going to come through this unscathed because inflation is devastating to everyone. Go back, if you want to find out how bad inflation is, go back and look at the Weimar Republic in Germany. I'm, I'm picking up my books and studying that again to see. Are we going to be that bad? I don't wow. know. Is it a possibility to be that <laughs> bad? If we lose our global reserve status, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I will say is, is, you know, if I was you out there, what can you do? Okay. <laughs> limit, limit your ability to adjustable debt. Right? I wouldn't have a HELOC on a piece of property right now to save my life mm -hmm. if I could mm -hmm. help it. Mm -hmm. Will interest rates come down in the short run? Maybe. But are they going to come down in the long run? Highly unlikely. Um, you, you know, know, they got down to 2.45 at one point. I know. It's unbelievable. 2.45. And <clears throat> I've talked to a lot of people who locked in in the fours because they saw it going up. And they mm -hmm. locked in the fours and they're very thankful they did. But I don't think anybody thought it would get in the sixes yet. No, I don't think I, anybody was prepared I, for that. I, I was actually shocked, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll have my ranges: worst case scenario, best case scenario. This is where I think it'll be, and that was above what my worst case scenario was. Mm -hmm. Ab absolutely, mm -hmm. I was, yeah. I was pretty shocked. Nobody saw it coming. I don't, I don't think. I, I just. Mm. So one thing I will say: <laughs> we're in harvest season. Okay, stock up on your foods a little bit. If you can have three months worth of the foods that you eat on a regular basis and you can rotate from that. If inflation is high, that's a built-in savings. Mm -hmm. Because a can of soup, if it's a dollar today, will be four dollars down the a road. Dollar ninety seven is that a dollar ninety-seven for a can is? of Campbell's soup the other day. I almost bought one. I put it back on the shelves. I'm sorry. I used to buy them 
Five years ago, four I bought them for, for 98 cents. Four for 88 cents, cents yes. at the Blue Star. Four for 88 cents, a dollar yeah. 97. I put it back. I'm sorry. I ain't so, doing it. And I there's, make homemade soup. There's been a lot of people who've changed their behavior because sure. of that. So that's sure. how that's how people are absorbing. But you know, take some time to do that because it's going to be relative in the future. One thing I'm concerned about is, yeah, the government's going to tell you that they're serious about inflation, but they really aren't serious about inflation because we've got such massive debt loads. They want to let inflation run higher than what uh, uh, interest rates really are so that they can help reduce that burden. Completely dishonest. I understand why they're doing it. I disagree with it, mm -hmm. but it keeps them in power because if we do have <coughs> that washing out, that that fire that gets out of control that puts the forest in the, the economic forest in the place it needs to be, none of those politicians are going to be in power because they will be laid bare as the fools that they have been behaving to be. They're not fools because because they're smart and they know what they're doing, but, but as far as the damages to us, their foolish behavior is going to cause us problems. Mm -hmm. So, you know, stock up on that a little bit. Um, you know, and there are other things that I can't give you a recommendation over TV because the government does, you know, limit on what we can say in a mass media. But sit down w with someone who's an advisor that's not just trying to sell you a product, right? If they're trying to sell you a product, then they're just trying to make a commission for themselves. And it may work. And, yeah, it may be a great investment over the long term, but is, it, was their intention really in your best interest? Sit down with somebody who wants to make a difference in your life that fears the Lord, that, that's trying to be prudent and wise in the future and understands they can't predict the future. No one can. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to pick the top of the market. Nobody's going to pick the bottom of the market. The only thing you can do in this environment is really honestly and courageously look at the possible outcomes and have a plan in place for when you get there. Mm -hmm. So one of the mm -hmm. things we have is like I was meeting with a client yesterday. I said, okay, what's <laughs> going to wipe you out when we did our analysis is if we have sustained inflation 5% or more, you don't have enough assets to keep up with it. So one of two options. You're going to have to reduce your, your spending, which is going to be hard to do in an inflationary environment, mm -hmm. or you're going to have to increase your risk. Well, well, that client doesn't have the risk tolerance to increase, tolerance to increase the risk, mm -hmm. but we have a plan in place that if we are sustained for 24 months over this period, you've reached the point that you have no other alternative. And I've given them 24 months to think about the approach that we're going to take, and then we're going to implement it. And my job is to help navigate them through the ups and downs of that environment. Those are the kind of conversations you need to be having. Mm -hmm. If you think tomorrow and the next three to five years is going to be the same as it's been for the past seven, then you know what, I hate to say it, but you deserve what you're going to get. That's not true. That's a mean <laughs> statement. But yeah, I say that statement. The truth will stand when everything else fails, I and say, that's pretty I, true. I say that statement more to shock you into going, hey, man, he's serious. Because I don't know how this is going to pan out. But in 24, 25 years of doing this, and, and I'm, a, I'm ridiculously competitive. I mean, I don't mind being beat, but I hate it. <laughs> right? I just do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we want to be, you know, we want to make a difference in the lives of those that we serve. And and uh, if I can make a difference in those lives, then I, I've always been admired by the sons of Issachar in the Bible. I, I can't remember exactly where it is, but the sons of Issachar recognized the signs of the times mm -hmm. and knew what Israel should do. The only reason they recognized the signs of the times was because God gave them the wisdom for that. So if God gives us the wisdom for that, then it's our responsibility to share that, to try to make troubling times a little bit easier for those people that we come in contact with. Mm -hmm. And uh, if somebody tells you they know what's going to happen exactly, then yeah, they're confident because they've been lucky for a period of time, or they really just want to make you feel good and confident so that they can take your money and make fees off of you at your expense so they're a little bit better shape than what they otherwise would be. I know that's a, a cynical statement to make, but the reality is we're in a period of time that things are changing. Mm -hmm. And and there's going to be a lot of pain for people, but in the midst of that, there's going to be massive opportunity for those who are ready. It is it is a time that I'm advising, and, and everybody knows I, I make money on my commissions, but I'm advising, and, and they all everybody says the same thing. We know that you, we trust you. Mm -hmm. 
And I do. If I don't think that I'm working with <clears throat> a buyer and I don't think that they can sustain that if things were to go, if one of them lost their job or whatever, the last thing you want to hear is six months down the road that, gosh, you let them over by and they really couldn't handle it when he lost his job or she lost her job. Right. And I knew over 60 people, my personal friends, who had to file bankruptcy during that time of hell here on earth. And of those 60 people, the names of those people would absolutely blow your mind. Yeah. And um, it, we didn't see it coming. We weren't prepared, Paul. And, and I love that about you. You want to prepare people. We weren't prepared. And none of us ever saw coming what happened. I'm reluctant now to do anything. I just am sitting waiting because I feel very scared. Now, after November, I will either be scared or I'll have moved to Alabama and be sitting <laughs> on the lake. I don't know what it'll be. That's fine. But I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. Well, yeah. and, and, and we should be because when you are cautious, you're going to make better decisions than you otherwise would. Mm -hmm. The thing about 2008, and I do think it's going to be a little different this time, than what it was in 2008 is because there was a move made against the small community banks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The government has consolidated. It destroyed our communities. It, it literally it destroyed. did. And took lives of bankers. It did. Yeah, yeah. But what, what we have now is kind of what the government seems to want is a select few too big to fail banks that they're just going to print money to prop up. Mm -hmm. And that's disgusting. The thing that you have to worry about is there was a time in the past when bankers had a responsibility to tell you no. Mm -hmm. In other words, Sherry, you know what? We're in. We're risking local community money. I know you want this house, but you can't afford it, so we're going to say no. Mm -hmm. The problem with the banking system now and what is making our bubbles worse is there's these banks just want to make money, and the government's going to bail us out. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you lose your house or not mm -hmm. if I'm a big and bank. And they don't care. Because no. I just want to make money. Yeah. If you lose the house, that's up to you. And people don't see in our society. We, and it wasn't at all that way. No, it not wasn't. Not at all that way. Well, no. and, and, and people fear God a lot more back then, too. So we're in a position now where, hey, you're just a means to an end for me to make money. You're mm -hmm. a profit center. Mm -hmm. I really don't care what happens to you. It's your responsibility to make mm -hmm. good decisions for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take advantage. Right. So, right. I mean, that I, I, I've had uh, a couple, you know, maybe a year and a half ago, I had people come in. They asked me for a consultation, and at the end of it, I basically looked at them and said, "Look, are you?" And I asked this before I give advice. <laughs> Are you here for us for seriously for my opinion in a consultation, or are you here for me to tell you what you're doing is okay? Mm -hmm. And you can see it in their face. Mm -hmm. And I never give my opinion if they're there. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I give my opinion, but I don't. I don't spend a whole lot of time on it because right. if you're here for me to say, if you're here with your goal to say yes, you need my approval to do it. Um, then in most cases, that's right. Like I met with somebody yesterday. Brilliant decision. If it pans out, absolutely. But in most cases back then, people just wanted somebody to tell them what they wanted to hear. And the question always started out, well, if the bank will loan me the money. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you know you're swinging for the fence and you're hoping they'll loan you the money. And there's, there was people that got loans that I honestly cannot believe the bank gave it to mm -hmm. them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. couldn't. So yeah. anyway, um, but, it, but, but again, it's opportunity. What I think is going to be different this time is we don't have to worry about the banks collapsing. Mm -hmm. The government's not going to make a move on these banks because they've consolidated down to a few. They've got government money behind them. So, yeah, I think prices are going to settle down, and they may, they may drop 20 or 30 percent or more than that in some areas where the bubbles have been a little bit stronger. But what happened in 2008 was you had the banks collapsing and calling all the loans. Mm -hmm. I don't That's see That's exactly that. what destroyed that everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are going to share something because I was gifted a CD yesterday, and I'm old, but I'm not old enough to have been a part of Hank Sr.'s music. But yesterday, going down the road after that little event that was like life-threatening and scare, scare the pejeezies out of you, I was listening to this CD and I just imagined a 29-year-old Hank Sr. in the back of a Cadillac who died at a very young age, a musical genius, a musical genius. Today, we still listen to his music. This is a CD produced by Dwight and it is of him doing Hank Sr. and I absolutely love it. So sit back, 
pretend you're as old or older than me. That's hard to do for a bunch of y'all, but just go ahead and do it anyway. And we're going to do this song, and uh, I want you to sit back and enjoy. And I love that shot. That is so cool. Thanks, that guys. Is a cool there shot. you go. You're my every dream Yet you're afraid Each thing I do Is just some evil scheme The more I learn To care for you The more we drift apart Why can't I free Your doubtful mind And melt your cold Your heart sad and blue And so my heart is paying now For things I didn't do In anger unkind words are said That make the teardrops start Why can't I free your doubtful mind And melt your cold You're afraid to try Why do you run and hide from life To try it just ain't smart Why can't I free your doubtful mind And melt your cold, cold heart There was a time when I believed That you belonged to me Great job. Now, I love Hank Sr., and, and that just tells you. I, I missed something in the music era because I love Kitty Wells, love Loretta Lynn, love the old stuff, but I never listened to Hank Sr., and I love that tribute. That's really cool. Now, I've asked you to read a page from Mike Smith's book, and I tell you all all the time, it is called God Keeps Showing Up, and Paul, you and I have seen this in our lives, and we understand yes. that. Can you read this page, please? I will. I sped read it real fast okay. to make sure. And this is, uh, um, Mike's books are one page little blippets, and it's, it's encouraging and inspirational. All right, so the title of this is Healing, um, and it starts out, at this time of year we get blankets, yellow blankets. They are not blankets to keep us warm, but they are blankets to cause us to sneeze. Yellow blankets of pollen that cover everything. Those of us that have allergies are in for a difficult time. We can get some temporary relief from medication, but the only way to get total relief is from rain. A thorough cleansing of a healing rain that washes the yellow blankets away. There is another kind of blanket that covers the earth, and it is not seasonal. It is the blanket of sin and it covers all the people all over the world. That blanket started way back in the Garden of Eden and it continues to infect us all. The infection causes death, a spiritual death, total separation from God. There is only one cure. It involves a washing away just like the healing rain does the pollen, but water won't wash away sin. For this disease, it has to be blood. The shedding of blood is necessary for the forgiveness of sin. The Bible says, quote, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's Hebrews 9.22. So what can remove our sin? Robert Lowry wrote a hymn to tell us, and y'all, I would sing this, but then nobody would want to <laughs> listen to me anymore. Uh -oh. So Robert Lowry wrote a hymn to tell us, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? nothing but the blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus brings healing to a lost world. 
May the blood of Jesus cover our nation, our world, and all its people. Father, we look to Jesus for healing because of his blood that was shed for us. Please bring healing from sin, physical diseases, and emotional stress from the storms that we are in. Father, we remember the words of David when he said, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. That's Psalm 103, 2 through 3. Thank you, Lord, for your promises. Father, make your face shine upon us. I ask it in the name of your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Isn't That's that really cool? good. Isn't that That's cool? Really good. Mike is, you got to meet him, Paul. You got to have like him come and speak at events. He's, he's, a, he's a firefighter. He's a chaplain. He's a businessman. He's a busy, busy person. And he's such a good, good guy. And again, his book is God Keeps Showing Up. It is available on Amazon, or you can chase Mike and Diane Smith down in Ball Ground. They're always volunteering for something. Every Saturday, they deliver food to those um, who are shut-ins in Ball Ground who can't afford to buy their own groceries or don't have transportation to go get them, and they are part of Dominic's mission, and I, I love these two people, and I am so thankful for that book. In the many, many years of television I've done, people give me books all the time, and I used to just give them to somebody else to read. I'd say, here, you read this, you read this. I would fight for this book. <laughs> I will not give this book to so you. So I don't get to take that with me when no, I leave today? No, you do today. not, but oh. I will probably give you one for Christmas. So <laughs> that I would bought, be fantastic. I bought several of them last week, and I've already given them away. It is just a sweet inspiration daily. And no matter what you're facing, you can look through this book and God does keep showing up. And I think God's gonna show up in America. I know that we're I in trouble. Too. I know, I, I fear a lot of things that are happening, but you know, I was looking back at this. This is my calendar from 2009. Wow. A lot has happened since 2009 and I wanna go through this. How many of those businesses you, are when gone? When you look at this, um, Lawson Chevrolet is no longer in business. More Furniture is no longer in business. Brenda Evans Designs no longer in business. Crescent Bank was taken over. Uh, Joyce, Joyce Millsaps Bryson passed away. Um, let's see, uh, Appalachian Memory is no longer in business. When Angela died, we shut the doors. Mountain View Hair Design, now Pam works uh, for Miss Leah. Blackberry Ridge Eatery, it was one of the first businesses that defaulted purely because the contractors and the workers, there were no houses being built in, Fan in Fannin mm -hmm. County, and so if she didn't have dirt on her floor, she wasn't gonna succeed. This, this, when I look at this, it absolutely blows my mind, and then I go to this page, and I think about all the businesses, um, Appalachian Community Bank, one of those who mm -hmm. failed here, and it wasn't that they failed, it's that the bank, the banks were called to call notes. They were taken know? over. They were taken yeah. over, and they didn't mean to do this to small business owners. They didn't mean to shut my doors. They didn't mean to do the things they did. The government came in and said, we're gonna shut you down, yeah. and we're gonna control the banking market, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. And everybody knows how I feel. I don't smoke, don't drink, never did drugs in my life. I cuss a little bit. And, and every time I mention the bank, Wells Fargo, I cuss. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but it People is, to this day still do that. Yes, yes, and I don't call them Wells Fargo. I call them something else. But anyway, <laughs> we are blessed. Yes. America is, is strong. We can get stronger together. We can. So y'all get together, find some time to spend time with your friends. Know that we are not guaranteed tomorrow. Yesterday, up close and personal, what it would be to say goodbye to somebody you care a lot about. So That's true. It is, a, it is a world that we need to value every single moment. I love you. Love I you love too, you. Sherry. I love you. I love you. And tell Miss Holly hello and those precious kids. Hey, is, one, one thing I want to say in closing. Yes. I have been absolutely blown away by the support of the sponsors for the football program, the cheer program, the band program. Awesome. We got a game, home game against um, uh, Murray County on Friday. If the Bobcats can win this Friday, this is 3-0, and the first time Yay! since about 2014. So Coach Standard, all these kids, they fought hard to turn this program around. Sponsor night's Friday night. Come out and support the Bobcats, the sponsors, um, in Gilmer County, be there at 645. We're gonna recognize everybody. I just had to say it because yes, it's been yes. unbelievable how many people in this community give back. Yeah. We don't get it from the big corporations. We get it from local people. So mm -hmm. support your local people. Mm -hmm. Support your local, local and people, your local, local businesses. Bobcats. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Wear purple. I wore purple eyeshadow today in honor of it. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. Thank you so much.
What a joy. I hate the days that he doesn't get to come, but I understand he has a business to run. We're going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet and, and know that today you need to pick up the phone and you need to call a good friend. You need to tell him, hey, I'm cheering you on. Hey, I'm supporting you. Hey, I'm loving you and I'm laughing with you. And uh, take that knife and put it down and quit stabbing people in the back because I've seen a little bit of that lately. It'll come back. <laughs> we'll see it you always soon. comes back. Only on ETC. <laughs>